Hello, so uh, this is going to be somewhat of a tutorial for double tissue and um, I'm not the best but I, I do know how to make double tissue so I'd, I'll just show you what I do. Double tissue is really helpful for making for shaping and folding things that are thin um, it's probably the most versatile uh, type of paper you're going to find. Like uh, Tissue foil gets too thick, single tissue is too thin um, you know, and then but then this one it can you can have um, a variety of colors. You can also have duo sheets. It's not too hard to make. Um, it's it's a overall really good paper. You can buy them from places, and there are some people that are really good at this, much better than I am. Um, like Paper Fox is pretty famous in the origami community for his paper. Um, but you know, making them is also pretty cool too. So, so you may remember the Pikmin and the eggplant. These were both double tissue, and so you can see. Um, it's not perfectly green, or it's not perfectly you know solid color because there's some purple spots, and just like here, but it actually evens out pretty well, and so it's nice and smooth, um, and also holds its shape really well if you remember. So this and it's also nice and thin, so it didn't get too thick like the Kami did. Um, here's the Dancing Crane by Robert J. Lang. So this one, um, this is kind of an old one, but I think this I'm pretty sure this was also double tissue. So I think this is yellow and white, um, and so I kind of wanted it to be like a pale yellow, and so that's how I did yellow or white um, and it, uh, the nice body cavity holds the shape pretty well um, and it's like nice and solid pretty firm on the neck um, because it didn't get too thick and then similar to the dancing crane this is Jesus and he was also from a uh, yellow and white um, double tissue you see how it, it holds the shape pretty nicely here but it also it didn't get too thick and what you'll need is um, here's a piece of glass with duct tape on it and uh, glass works pretty well, but uh, sometimes I just use the desk for like bigger pieces. I can just use the, the desk and that's okay too. Um, and then here's some brushes. Like I, I like this wide brush and then I like having all three because they're sometimes, you know, uh, the wide, medium, and small. Sometimes there's uses for each of them. And then you need a tube or an optional. The tube helps and you'll see why. And then also um, methyl cellulose, which comes from this powder and then you just mix it in. Um, with a ratio of one one teaspoon to half a cup for Americans, and then uh, fans are helpful, um, and then maybe maybe also a paper cutter to to make your square. Other than that, that's about it. Oh, and then also the the paper, obviously. Okay, so um, my thing is going to be blue, the dark blue on the main color, and then gray as the secondary color. So I'm going to do the blue first. So what I do is I roll it up. And just, just get this thing ready. And then I'm just going to put this aside. This is a gift wrap too, by the way. And I'll put it aside. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I like the medium brush. Well, simply because... It, it's the biggest one, but that can fit in the jar. I'm just going to coat the glass. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. This is an applesauce jar, and so it makes my methyl cellulose smell like applesauce sometimes. That's pretty good. Um, so the first layer, you, you don't have to be super, you don't have to put a lot, because all it's doing is just anchoring that first sheet. So I think I put too much, I'm just going to push it up to the top, because I don't actually need this much. Yeah, um, and I'll use this again later. Anyways. Now, so I don't know if you can tell, but it's like kind of shiny. You see that? So I've got my first layer down. Now I take this, I anchor the edge of it there, and now I'm going to take the wide brush. And as I roll it out, I'm going to be brushing out the bubbles.
you can kind of see the brush strokes, but uh, uh, some nice texture. And uh, there's not really many bubbles. There are some wrinkles over here, but my experience is that um, once it dries, it doesn't really make a big difference at all. Um, yeah, so this is, again, smaller sheets are easier to lay down with less wrinkles. And also, again, the t um, I'll only be taking a square, right? So chances are I'll just cut it off here and use all this nice part for the main model and then th this up there will be left over. So it's not a huge deal. Um, I do kind of want to save it though, so I'm going to put some underneath here because I like my leftovers. And that's good enough. Before I start the, the second methyl cellulose layer, I'm going to get the tube ready. So, roll it up with my second layer. You gotta go kind of fast on this one, the second layer. Um, depending on your paper type, it might rip this layer while you're doing this. But um, that was pretty fast. I like this new brush that I got. And so, see how it's nice and shiny again. So now it's ready to put this the second piece on. Now I've got to try to make sure I line it up. As best I can, which is easier said than done. That's pretty good. And I'll line it up on over here too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now. So again, this is not perfect, but it, oh, we'll, we'll make it okay. This is actually looking not too bad. Um, you see how some spots have are darker, or meaning like you can see through it more. That's where there's more methylcellulose. So especially up here, when I put it at the late end, um, it's super super wet. So that's why it's it's gonna um, and what's gonna end up happening up here is that uh, you're gonna see less of the gray and more of the blue. So again, I'm gonna probably discard this top part and just use this nice um, bottom. And um, this is not the, the permanent texture. It will it will even out. You'll be able to see more of the gray later on. Um, another thing, see how it's, it's like lifting up in the corner there. So I'm going to take either this small brush or I take this even smaller brush. This one I usually use for shaping. Um, I use this one. And I just go under the corner and put some some in there. Push it shut. So now, some people, what some people like to do is they like to put an extra layer of methylcellulose um, on top of the second sheet. I usually don't do that though, um, but some people do, so it's up to you. Now at this point, you can either just let it hang out for at least an hour. I mean, two hours, pretty good. Um, this one, it doesn't take too long, it's, like, it's quicker at drying than um, tissue foil. Tissue foil takes quite a while, but um, if you have a fan, fan, it goes even faster. Um, so I'll just, you know, yeah, so I'll probably just leave this here for like an hour and then I'll get back and tell you and then show you uh, how it is and we'll peel it off, which will be super nice. So it's been two hours, um, some of it, some of the time with the fan on, some of it without. And you see, one thing to notice that this part up here, this is completely dry, but since because I had put more on up here, it um, it becomes darker. And then 
and the rest of the thing it's like kind of is more lighter uh, and then in the back um, that's how it looks oh now comes the best part where you get to peel it off let me make sure it's all quiet in the house So, you know, this is more shiny than I'd like. Normally I don't like it this shiny, but that's not bad. I'm actually going to weigh this down there and then this is an empty jar. Of previous batch of methyl cellulose is an empty jar. I'm just going to weigh it down on the other side. Just, you know, I think I'm pretty sure it's dry, but just out of habit. I like to weigh it, hold it down like this, and then this is probably completely unnecessary, but just to be sure. So yeah, I forgot to mention that the first layer, the more methylcellulose you put, the more shiny it's going to be. Like here, I, d I didn't put as much on the first layer and it's not that shiny, but here I think, um, personally I think I botched it, I put too much methylcellulose on this first layer. But you know, some, some people like it, some models have prefer a shinier um, first layer. Um, now I just gotta cut the square. Okay, so I've swapped out my, my glass pane for this thing. So this is the only one I have, I know sometimes they're the bigger ones that like chop, I don't have one of those. And uh, it's kind of unfortunate that this thing can only slice like um, I mean, like one foot across, or my bad, thirty-one centimeters for for the non-Americans. Anyways, so let's see. I don't like this end. I'm probably gonna cut that off. I'll cut off this top end. So I'm also gonna cut off this edge over here because it's like you see how it's kind of imperfect over there. But I'm gonna. This edge is nice, so I'm gonna line it up over with kind of like that, and I'm just gonna cut off this this ugly part. I think that's pretty good. All right, so I don't really like this part. So, but now, so even though you know over here you see that there's this part that the gray doesn't. There's blue, but there's no gray. But from the out, from the back, from the model unfolding, it, that's going to be okay. That'll be hidden. So I'll just pretend like that's gray over there. It makes things easier to cut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to. It's like you know, those of you who use printer paper and need to uh, need to cut a square. It's just like that. So I'll just fold this up to the edge. Good. So that will give us a square, and and now we have a straight edge, mostly straight. I mean, it's not perfect, but um, most of the time, if there's such small imperfect imperfections, it won't really make a difference in the uh, in the end. Rarely will it make a difference. So I'm also going to cut off. I'm going to cut off a little bit below the edge so I can get rid of this this ugly this uh, there's some ugly parts so I'm going to cut that off and so now I'm lining up over here because this is my this is my nice edge so that's lined up like that and then it's sticking out so that when I when I slice it um, this this ugly edge is going to get cut off. There we go. And so now I've got myself a nice square. And remember, this edge over here doesn't really matter that much. So, yeah, that's so I've got a nice sheet of double tissue. And since I like my leftovers, 
I'll probably make something out of this. I don't know what, yet what, but I probably will. Um, and then this, this can just be ripped off. There we go. All right, so this is, these are the scraps. I'll, we don't need these. But this is my leftover that I'm going to use. And then this is the uh, my main sheet. Okay, so I ended up making this these two penguins out of the um, this paper. This one here was the the twenty five centimeter main square, and this guy was a scrap, so I don't remember how big it was. Uh, yeah, and if you want to fold these, um, there's a tutorial linked in the description or something like that. This is a good model, so go check that out. Yeah, so that's about it for this uh, double tissue tutorial. Um, Hope you enjoyed the ASMR and also the knowledge. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks.